Mrs. Eliza Fotheringay is a planner, or, as Mildred Hunnicutt would say, a worrywart. So when Mr. Weaver from Survival Shelters, Inc. came to see Eliza, she was naturally interested in what he had to say. For the ultimate in protection from a thermonuclear war between the superpowers, our self-sustaining models give the consumer the best of everything. Our state-of-the-art shelter can safely feed and house a family of five for 87 years. Seven years longer than scientists' best estimate of how long the world would need to recover from such a cataclysm. Eliza was sold. Weaver did not need to go on with his sales pitch, but he did. The SS4 self-sustaining systems include electricity, air, food, water, waste disposal, and even entertainment. Then, knowing that Eliza ran a daycare center, Weaver hit upon her soft spot. Children. Even during times of peace, the SS4's master computer can be easily programmed with the pictures and text of every children's book ever published. You can pick any voice from the computer you'd like, from an ultra-high-pitched soprano to the deepest of basses, to read to the little ones. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a lifesaver on those days when you simply can't read about another fuzzy bunny? And so the sale was made. Within 24 hours, workmen from Survival Shelters, Inc. arrived and began fitting Mrs. Fotheringay's modest home with the SS-4. Eliza rested easily once the work was completed, knowing that she had planned. On that inevitable day, she, her husband, her son, and her daughter would be protected from the arrogance of the politicians who dared to press those deadly launch buttons. What Eliza didn't count on was what happened five weeks later. Her husband was at his office, her children at their respective schools in the valley. She instructed the master computer to read a story to her four daycare children in the motherly voice she had selected while she went out to her garden to pick a tomato for supper. Ah, there's a beauty. It should make a wonderful sauce. This is a level one warning. An incoming missile strike has been detected. There's no need for panic. Self-sustaining systems have been activated. Last shields will see you in 30 seconds. Mrs. Fotheringay could see the children's confused faces through the windows. They knew something important was happening. After allowing herself a moment of sorrow because her family would not survive this attack, Eliza consoled herself that her daycare children, two boys and two girls, would live. The future belonged to her and them. She ran towards the house, still clutching the newly plucked garden tomato. Fifteen seconds to blast shield closure. It was very unfortunate that Eliza tripped on that stone and fell to the ground. <gasps> Seconds before the missiles hit, Eliza watched the tomato roll to a stop as the shelter's blast shields clicked into place, turning her home into a radiation-safe cocoon for four children for the next 87 years. Four young children have become the unwitting last members of the human race. The master computer will keep them safe for the next 87 years, despite the war, fire, and death going on all around them. We'll go inside their shelter several decades into the future when we continue with Omega and Alpha. Tell us again, Papa, please. What was it like? Now, kids, I think you've made enough demands on your grandfather for one day. But he was the only one alive back then. Still... <laughs> uh, it's okay, son. But you look tired. I'm never too old to tell my grandkids how things were before the war. Oh, good. You mentioned birds last time, Papa. What were they like? 
birds were little animals that could fly on their own wings, and they sang the prettiest songs. They could talk. Yeah, <laughs> not like people. They tweeted. They what? Tweeted, like this. Tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> It was music to the ear. All of them had different songs, different sounds, different tones. They sound nice. They were. Did they die too when the bomb fell? Yes, yes, they did, along with everyone and everything else. That was a long time ago, way back when I was your age, Jody. You were a boy once. <laughs> <laughs> Many years ago. Okay, kids. I think that's enough for now. But I didn't get the chance to show Papa my drawing. Drawing? What drawing? This one. The last time you told us what it was like in the before time, I listened really carefully. That night, I drew this picture of what you said. Am I close? Uh, very close. So that's what the shelter looks like from the outside. It did. And now? Well, no one knows. No one's been outside for a long time. I wish I could have seen what things looked like back then. I, I wish you could have too, both of you. It's time to go, kids. Okay, Daddy. Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> hey, goodbye, little one. Mwah. Goodbye, Papa. Mwah. I'll see you soon. They're good kids. They're fit and healthy. That's important. And surprising in this iron and steel coffin. I'm sorry if they tired you out. Don't worry about it. They're curious about what they missed out on. And I am the last of Mrs. Fotheringay's original daycare kids, though I'm far from a kid anymore. You're doing pretty well for your age. Could be worse, I suppose. You wanted to talk, Donald. You said something was concerning you. Yes, for the past several nights. You've、uh, heard the scratching too. You've heard it. I have. It's like something is clawing at the airlock, trying to get in. But that's not possible. Nothing could be alive out there, right? It certainly sounds like something is. Who knows? The outside camera and master computer are long gone. We're blind in here. Couldn't Mr. Bishop rig things so we can see outside and learn what this thing is? Even a glimpse would. You know the answer to that as well as I do. Jim deserves a medal. And keeping this place operational and a safe haven for all of us. Well, he's got the control panel jury rigged eight ways to Sunday to make sure we get the absolute essentials: like food and water and oxygen. That's why we've lost the pleasantries like the master computer. If Jim tries to switch things around even briefly, he might not be able to get things back the way they were. We are taxing this place. It was made to shelter five people for eighty-seven years. Oh, we've got fifteen people now. We're lucky the shelter's worked for as long as it has. Mr. Bishop mentioned that it might not have much more time left. He told me that too. Maybe just a couple of months. And then? I don't know. We could stay in here and hope to survive, or、uh, go outside. But nothing can live on the surface. Except for whatever has been scratching at the airlock for the past few nights. Is it possible the Earth has already recuperated enough to support life again? I don't see how. I remember the early news reports from the master computer. The superpowers spared no expense in launching their missiles. Why the destruction was on a scale never seen before. Then we'll have to stay here, somehow. We need to know our options. We need to know what's going on out there. But we're blind, just like you said. We still have our eyes. Are you suggesting one of us needs to go have a look? I'm the logical choice. Why? <laughs> I've lived the longest. Precisely why you shouldn't go. Your knowledge has been invaluable to us. Who would you ask that, Jody, Karen? Of course not. Because they've barely had a chance to live. No, son, I should be the one. We'll have to wait until the scratching thing stops. 
Why? Because it could be dangerous to whoever goes out there. And if it gets him here, what then? Impossible! What reason do we have to believe that it, it's going to stop what it's doing? It, it wants to get in. We don't know how strong it is. But we can't wait. I'm going. Case closed. But, but Dad... Case closed. We've never really had a leader here. But as the oldest, I say that when we need one, it should be me. I know not to argue with you when you get this way. Ha <laughs> ha, smart boy. I'll take every precaution possible. We still have a couple of functioning radiation suits. I'll be protected. Yeah, at least for a little while. What about the thing? What will protect you from that? Dad, come in. Amir Song at the airlock. I'm surprised the comm system in this rat suit still works. That makes two of us. What shape is the airlock in? Not bad. Uh, some dents, but it looks intact. Any sign of it? No. Uh, well, there's nothing to do but open her up. Are you sure about this? I've never been more sure of anything. Okay. Good luck. I... I, I, I don't believe it. Dad? Birds. Sunshine. Trees. Leaves are on the ground. It's fall. That's... that's impossible. I may be old, but my eyes still work. How could... Good morning, Martin. Isn't it a lovely day? M Mrs. Fotheringay? Dad? Dad, come in! Martin, it's so good to see you again. My, how you've grown. You're uh, young. Thank you. But it's been years. You shouldn't be. The, the bombs. None of this should be. You can take off the helmet, dear. Are you sure? I'm breathing, aren't I? I had forgotten what fresh air felt like. Oh, it tastes sweet. Marvelous, isn't it? I, I don't get this. I'm decades older, but you're... There's a secret. Do you want to know it? Oh, of course. Follow me, then. It's not far. I'll introduce you to my benefactor. Here we are. I... I... I don't understand. Surely you see it. The hole in the ground? It's probably from an enemy missile. It goes far down. Very far down. Down to the very bowels of the earth. And? That's where my benefactor resides. She means me. Oh, no, you can't be. Why not? Don't you believe I exist? I believe in God. Then you believe in me, is opposite. You can't have the good without the bad. The in without the yang, you know? I exist and he exists, but he doesn't seem interested in the earth anymore. I am. I have been since the Garden of Eden. You brought Mrs. Father and Gay back to life? It was a simple thing. A parlor trick. I mean, really. When did it happen? Not long ago. A week, I think. So, the years have passed. Oh, yes. Decades. 
I restored her to the age she was when she died in the war. You did all this, the birds, the trees? It's an illusion. A very sophisticated, very sensory, very safe illusion. How did you get it in my head? It's the school marm's illusion. I'm merely sharing it between your minds. Do you have something else you'd rather experience? I can offer you a wide variety of many different... What do you want? What do I always want? There are souls to be had in your shelter. I want them. I've been trying to get to them for the past several nights. So that was you. I was hoping it would lead to this very encounter. Why would we give you our souls? For all this. An illusion? It's as real as anything can be now. Your senses must be telling you that. You can hear the birds chirping and the frogs croaking. You can feel the warmth of the sun on your face. The others in the shelter can experience this same illusion, or whatever else might please them. For the cost of their souls? Precisely. Mrs. Father and Gay, surely you didn't. Oh, she did. How else would she be alive now? You can't understand, Martin. You and the other children were safe in the shelter when all hell broke loose. You didn't feel the agony of your skin bubbling and burning away. Your brain melting like a candle. Life is precious, and I wanted it back. Wasn't your soul already in heaven? The Master has ways of making his wishes known anywhere. I learned of his offer and accepted it. You gave up paradise for an illusion. Time for lunch. Behold. Doesn't it all look delicious? Martin, do you recognize that aroma? Eh, roast turkey. It's only a small part of the spread on my banquet table. Go have a look. No. You're not tempted, after all those years of rations. I am tempted, but I'm not going to give in to you. I'm not selling my soul for an imaginary turkey leg. It will fill your belly, just like a real one would. I said no. I didn't expect such stubbornness. Perhaps the other members of your intrepid band will feel otherwise. I wouldn't count on it. Oh, I have much else to tempt them with. Observe. Summer. Spring. Winter. And as we were. I can provide all of you with anything your hearts desire. Uh, you'll be surprised how little it will take for your comrades to surrender their souls. We have to agree to give them to you. You won't disclose this opportunity to your friends? I didn't say that. They should know. They're all capable of making their own decisions. Do tell them this is a limited time offer. What does that mean? I know that your shelter's systems are failing. Before long, it will be incapable of supporting human life. No air, no food, no water. Nothing. Then what will your choice be? You can try to survive in your dead home or leave it for the surface. As much as I desire your souls, my offer will end before the shelter fails. I want you and yours to choose my way. And if we don't? Now, well, here's a small sample of what it's really like out there. <laughs> you feel it now, Martin. Your skin bubbling, your brain melting. Most unpleasant. All that you see and feel is what awaits you if you ignore my offer. Not to worry, dear. You're healed. No harm done. Uh, neat trick. See how painfully you and yours will die if you wait too long. Please, Martin. 
please accept. Like I said, I'll tell everyone. Then it's up to them. Are there children in the shelter? What if there are? Well, I haven't received a child soul into Hades for some time. It will be a unique experience. Unanimous. I'm surprised. They're sensible people. So we stay here after the systems fail. We won't last long. The air will get thin, pretty. Would、uh, you rather go to the surface? It's not much of a choice, is it? There is a、uh, third possibility. What's that?、Uh, blow the place up. What? Jim Bishop has been struggling to keep things running here. I'm sure he could rig the place to explode. Mass suicide? Oh, I'd hardly call fifteen people a mass. But then we'll be playing right into his hands. Suicide means an eternity in in hell. Under normal circumstances, but this is hardly a normal circumstance.、Uh, I'm、uh, I'm sure we'll be forgiven. We'll need to have another meeting. Of course. Dad, Dad. Calm down, son. What's wrong? It's Karen. We can't find her anywhere. When she didn't show up for lessons, Miss Wainwright and I went looking for her. We've looked everywhere. I'm sure you just missed her. No, we looked and looked. She's not here. I swear it. Go back to your school, Jody. Your dad and I will find your sister. I want to help. You can help by going to see Miss Wainwright. You don't want to miss your lessons. Okay. She's probably playing hide and seek, worrying everyone's sick. Wait till I catch her. There's another possibility. Come with me. Just as I feared, one of the junior rad suits is gone. Karen wouldn't have. If she left the shelter, she's in great danger. I'm going to the surface. No, I'll do it. I'm her father. But I've been there already. I know what to expect. I'll bring her back, son. I promise. Do we know if the missing rad suit was functional? We can only hope. Karen's drawing. Oh, she's out here, all right. Karen, Karen. Karen. Patience, Martin. She is safe. See there, by the master. Karen, well, what's wrong with her? She's just standing there. Oh, she's enjoying her illusion. What illusion? She's six years old. In her mind, she is in an enormous candy store, and the shelves are overflowing with sweet treats like she's never tasted before. And she can have anything she wants for free. You see how happy I can make any of your people? How dare you bring her here? Well, the child came of her own accord. She did, Martin. She did. Why would she do that? Well, I have no idea, but I am very glad to see her. Have you made your decision yet? No. Well, what have you been doing since we spoke? Looking for Karen. Well, you found her. Decide. Let me have her. Why should I? Look at the smile on her face. She's having a wonderful time in the candy store. It's fake. She does not seem to mind. Decide. The decision isn't mine to make. My people and I need to talk. You're stalling. Yes or no. No one's going to decide anything until Karen is safe in the shelter. Now let her go. And get nothing in return?、Mm, hardly. Twenty-four hours. Let me have her, and you'll have our decision in twenty-four hours. Hmm. How do I know I can trust you? You're wondering if you can trust me. Very well. 
Taker, you have precisely 24 hours. Do not attempt to deceive me. Why, Karen? I heard Papa talking to everyone about what was outside. It sounded so nice. I wanted to see it. Don't ever do something like that again, dear. It's not safe. But I only wanted to make sure my picture was right. <gasps> my picture! It's right here, honey. Oh, good. I was afraid I lost it. It's pretty close, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sweetheart. You did a good job. Take your picture and run along, honey. Miss Wainwright is expecting you. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, she, she did it for me. While you were on the surface, all the adults got together. I told them about your plan. <clears throat> and? They agree that it's the best thing to do. The only thing to do. I feel sorry for the kids most. It's best for them too, Dad. I keep telling myself that. Are you sure, Papa? It seems so real. I'm sure, dear. Aw, so there's no candy store on the surface? No, it was all pretend. No birds? No trees? No sunshine? No. What about the pretty lady? Her, I'm not so sure about. <clears throat> I'll tell you a secret, if you swear not to tell anyone else. Sure. Soon there will be candy. There will be? Yes. Also, there will be birds and trees and sunshine, and all of us will experience them together. How soon? Soon. Will Mom be there? I'd like to see her again. She'll be there, and your grandmother, too. Do they like candy? You uh, ask them when you see them. Come in! Go play, Karen. I... I have to talk with your papa. Okay! Goodbye, papa. Remember, sweetheart, not a word. Of course not. It's a secret. Mr. Bishop asked me to give you this. It looks like an old TV remote. I suppose this red button is the one? Press it and the shelter systems will overload. In less than a minute, everything, everyone, will be gone. It's best to bring things to a close on our terms. Agreed. When are you going to do it? Like I told him, at the 24-hour mark, I don't lie, not even to the devil. Where is he? He's late. It's not quite 24 hours yet. Are you contradicting me? No, Master. I'm simply stating a fact. <laughs> Martin, why are you always wearing that helmet? You don't need it. Well, your time's up. Don't keep me waiting. We all talked, and we have our answer. Which is... No. What the... Did you honestly think I couldn't take that from you with these? It looks like a detonator. You were going to kill yourselves. You were going to play me for a fool? How dare you? Away with this primitive device. So much for your plan. Now, for your death. <laughs> no one tricks Satan. No one. Your plan will accomplish nothing. I'll get all the other souls. I will. Martin? How could you? Such a loss of life. Mrs. Fotheringale, please. Martin? The red button, press it. I, I... <laughs> she belongs to me, old man. She does only what I command. Oh, for what we once were, please. You're a fool, a dying fool. No! <laughs> How dare you! You were supposed to get me their souls, the last souls on Earth. That's why I brought you back. That was your single purpose. I... I just couldn't let... I've had it with this whole miserable planet. Back to the way it truly is. 
guy with your former student. What a disappointment. After all my efforts, time to write off this planet entirely. It's of no use to me now. What's this? A weed? Life in this radioactive wasteland? I won't have it. Gone. Much better. Its death suits this barren place. What I could have given those people in exchange for... for a mere trifle. <laughs> Mankind. They'll never learn now. HOH Productions presents Omega and Alpha. Written by Mike Murphy. Starring Alex Spurlock as the narrator. Jamie Benson as Mr. Weaver. Rebecca Hansen as Eliza. Claire Massa as Master Computer. River Higby as Jody. Hinkley Hansen as Karen. John Hinkley as Donald. Joe Stofko as Martin. And introducing John Specht as Satan. Omega and Alpha was mixed by Glenn Higby. Sound effects by John Carl Toth. Music by John Carl Toth. Produced by Glenn Higby and John Carl Toth. Directed by Glenn Higby. We hope you have enjoyed our version of Omega and Alpha. Until we meet again, I am your host, Alex Spurlock.